So Maya's idea of a an object that has curves or has features involves it adding more shapes to make that curve, right? Now that's vitally different than what we had in Fusion where um, something was defined and was infinitely smooth, defined by an equation, right? So like in math class, when you have a curve, um, you have an equation, right? Maybe like this, you've seen a graph probably like this in your life. And if you zoom in on this curve in this graph, it stays smooth. It kind of starts looking like a straight line, but because it's curving very gently. Yes. Okay, uh, try another computer for today. Yep. Uh, so this curve is should be infinitely smooth because it's an equation. It's defined by mathematics. And the more you zoom in, well, you're just looking closer on the number scale. But in Maya, we are viewing what's called a mesh, which is a mesh or collection of a bunch of polygons, right? Our polygons, most of the time in Maya, happen to be square in shape, known as quads, okay? Uh, they have four sides, right? Now, you can have triangular meshes, um, but oftentimes we're going to try and edit in quads, okay? Uh, so the more polygons you have, the smoother the model will be, right? I'm going to show you a hands-on example of that, but to kind of bring it back to something um, that we all probably are familiar with, like a video game, right? So we did this example in the other classes. Um, Final Fantasy 15, I think, is one of the most recent Final Fantasy games, right? Okay, so let's read about the, the polygon count. How many polygons are in the character models in Final Fantasy 15? Compared to the 20,000 polygons used in Final Fantasy 13, Final Fantasy 15 improves in quality using 100,000 polygons per character. So that's a big jump, right? That's five times more shapes, more probably quads um, in each character. 100,000 polygons sounds like unbelievable amount but really guys for 3d modeling it's not a big deal um, the increases that we see in graphics in video games and whatnot are not really because our 3d modeling programs just happen to get so much better it's really because uh, we're able with today's modern graphics cards to push more of these polygons to the screen at a decent frame rate right so it's, it's really about avoiding lag. So you're, you're looking at the trade-off of a high polygon model that's laggy or a low polygon model that looks bad but runs smooth, right? Just like when you have a mediocre graphics card, you may not be able to run your settings on max, right? But the same, work, it, the same thing happens in modeling. So the smoother this object is, this, or the, I'm sorry, the, the smoother it looks, likely the more polygons it has. So let's select your object and go ahead and look in your tool shelf here for this window pane looking thing that looks like it's got an extra amount of, of uh, grid squares there. If you hover over it, it says smooth. If you click it, you'll see your ball becomes smoother and also that there's more polygons. So there's more straight lines defining this curve now, okay? This is critical, super critical in um, our editing. So an artist who know, really knows what they're doing, like a CG artist, um, they're gonna adhere to this philosophy whenever they're actually modeling something, right? Um, let's see, this is a good example. On this character here, there are a lot of polygons in the ear area because there's a lot of detail, a lot of curvature in there, right? A lot of detail around the eyes because there's curvature. Maybe the eyes blink or something in the game, right? So there's there's extra polygons there to deal with that detail, right? To add more detail. Whereas on the back of the head, not much is moving back there. It's just kind of made up of polygons, right? 
So you use less in less detailed areas and more in higher detail areas. We're actually going to learn to do that by the end of today. So what if we select this object and use the opposite of smooth? We use reduce here. Why not just run with a low polygon count? It won't be as laggy, right? Well, let's reduce. Let's reduce, reduce, reduce. Things are not looking so good anymore. Right? Looks like you're, you're in 64 game now. It's no Final Fantasy 15. This is like Final Fantasy 1, right? Yes, you can certainly smooth it too much to where your computer lags out. Yeah, if you try. Yeah, you can actually crash it. Yeah. Feel free. But you're, you're going to result in a crash. Yeah. Um, you can keep reducing until it's utter crap. Um, look at that. I mean, that was, at some point, that represents a circle. I don't know. It's not really a sphere anymore, right? And if I try to smooth it out of that, it's not really going to get there. It's now like some sort of weird shark fin thing. At this point, I would just delete. You can hit the delete key and start over. Um, so you can also you could try this out on different shapes to see what happens. Like, what if I smooth a square? Like, what what could happen? Whoa! I just made a ball, right? Isn't that cool? It's like a quad ball from from Fusion Sculpt Mode. But but. Um, the real power of Maya is going to come into play when we start editing these um, more intentionally. So for that to happen, I suggest to just get like a standard kind of ball without a bunch of subdivisions or smooths done to it. So go ahead and just get a standard ball here. And this is going to be the main uh, meat of today's lesson, OK? Uh, you can just hit delete on your keyboard to delete a uh, thing. So guys, here's the meat of today's lesson. Um, if you right click and hold down your mouse, remember in Fusion, this offered you options, right? Editing options. If you right click and hold down your mouse, um, first off, when we get into one of these modes that are selected by doing this with your mouse and letting go, you can always come back to safety by right clicking and going back to object mode, okay? You'll deal with objects as a whole. But for now, we just want to deal with faces. So we're going to go down to face and let go, right? A, a highlight. Now we're editing at the face level. So we are editing individually these guys. Now, from our previous lesson yesterday, we know that these tools here can move, rotate, and scale. They apply to the faces. So let me click a face. I'm going to hit W to move it. And I'm going to pull it out. And look at that. This is why I say that Maya is going to model way faster than Fusion ever would. Fusion will be more precise. Ma Maya will be much quicker. Go ahead and try doing some weird stuff with this. It's interesting like how it reacts because it's way different than what we're used to. Now, this doesn't just happen on one, one face. You can edit entire um, segments of a model by selecting them and you know dealing with them all. So you could hold Shift and click a bunch of different faces to edit them. So go ahead and try that out. You can see I'm, I'm selecting multiple by holding Shift and just clicking on them. And, um, you could use the R key to, to scale them, the E key to rotate them, or the W key to move them. Guys, this here, this is the basis of modeling. Seriously, this is the real deal. Um, modeling characters and whatnot is pretty much based on this. So if you move, it, just like in Fusion, um, if you move a polygon through another one, you're going to break things. So I'm going to pull this, this polygon upwards through, these, through the model, and things start turning black, and things start looking weird, and the 3D printer would spaz out, and it's just it's broken at this point. They intersect themselves, and who wants that? It's not good. Not good practice. 
uh, avoid doing that anytime you're modeling. There's no object I know of in life that self intersects, maybe in some weird theoretical physics or something, but. Um, So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna return to safety here. I've edited this model till it was um, very ugly. I'm gonna return to safety by right clicking and going to object mode. Okay, you let go. Now I have this object at the object level, and I can hit the delete key to rid myself of it. Right, rid my scene of it. I'm gonna start over so I can show you guys uh, something pretty cool. So if we go to face mode here. If we go to face mode and select a few areas that maybe we think should be the eyeballs of my new character here. I messed that up, hang on. I'm holding shift in order to get those two areas selected. I can select smooth and it will only add detail to the areas that I selected. So you see how that now, if we zoom in here, that now has more divisions in that area, thus allowing for more detail, right? So if I had eyeballs that I wanted to sink in, but I wanted more detail, I would need to add it by smoothing that out, adding more polygons, right? So now I have some eyes. Do you all see how that works? More polygons there, more detail? That's how you add the uh, ears and the facial features and whatnot of a human, right? We're gonna learn, of course, a lot more editing strategies, but that's definitely one of them. Return to safety by right-clicking and going to object mode to be back in object mode. And we'll briefly discuss um, booleans next. But that, that kind of concludes going into face mode and coming out of it, okay? You can both smooth or reduce in face mode. But warning you that reducing gets kind of weird. Starts making triangles and stuff and no one likes that. <laughs> 